It's been a week and I've done nothing but write page after page after page for every class imaginable. It's time for me to take a break. It's time for me to do something I like to do. It's time for me to cease slavishly writing on contemporary graphic design. And start writing shadow run story time. There are a lot of threads. This is the sixth in fact. So I'm going to stop linking each of them individually at the start of these threads from now on. What little needs to be known is that they can all be found under subtg's shadow run tag. And the last one was here. When last we left off. Tank the troll had met a horrible and untimely end. 2D the hacker had a run in with Evo's subsidiary crash cart and then Raz considerably dumber subsidiary hardcore. Geppetto the black magician was time sharing his body with adversary, his mentor spirit, and Dervish the rocket orc had put a few more blades in. The remaining three team members were looking through leads to find Joy the physical adept, so they could get back on the trail of two times the paranoidic of a hacker, who had stolen an adorable puppy that happened to host terabytes of confidential information. All things considered, a fairly normal run. Capture Day Bess with. No, capture. The drop bears come in way later in the story. Because of the dreaded finals monster, I've only got about 3 pages of material that I can just CV over. I'll put out what I have, but then I've gotta write manually, so bear with me. So, the team had a few leads in Vegas. Not necessarily on Joy the Physical Adept, but on getting to know the people who might be able to steer them in the right direction. 2D had picked up work with a Mr. Johnson operating out of Caesar's Palace, and the team was prepared to meet him that afternoon. Geppetto had tried to get in touch with Don Dominic Fried of the Verantes family, the power behind the casino consortium, but couldn't pin the old mob boss down. Dervish's sensei the Aztlan Pit fighter had tossed him a reference to a man named Donald Kane, a black ops spook who supposedly now worked consortium security. Don Frieda seemed like something of a presumptuous move on our part, so in the morning before the Johnson meet and after freshening up, the team decided to see if they couldn't find Kane. As it turned out, the team got lucky on a hunch. As 2D and Geppetto scoped out Caesar's palace, Dervish stopped by the casino floor security office and got himself an Eiffel. Making the rounds and checking in with the spiders and guards or at least the ones that were publicly visible was a giant of a man or at least a giant of a human. His tailored suit unable to conceal his barrel chest and Chris Redfield biceps. Donald Kane was old, his wrinkles obscuring the faded ink of military unit tattoos, and he sported a big ol' handlebar moustache. He had worked black ops in Bogota for years running security for all of the major casinos on the strip was still probably like a luxury dream retirement for this guy. His name tag read security chief Roger Larson. Dervish approached and, in what might have been a minor mistake, asked, Excuse me, Mr. Kane? Kane's fingers twitched instinctively, reaching for an assault rifle that wasn't there. Dead eyes, suddenly icy and robotic rather than glinting and full of light, locked onto Dervish. What do you call me? Dervish coughed. Sorry, Mr. Larson. Um. Sensei sent me, said you'd know him. Larson Kane's eyes narrowed. His frown showed teeth, an instinctive sign of primal aggression. I don't know any yaks, boy. Must have me mistaken for someone else. Dervish clarified. Sensei I sent a Yakuza. He's Mexican. A former gladiator. As old as you. Covered in prison tattoos. I think his real name is Jose. And, in a split second, Donald Kane was back to a grinning, jocular older uncle figure. He chuckled heartily, grabbing Dervish by the shoulder. Well, why didn't you say so? And fair the record, kid, his real name ain't Jose. Least, that's not the real name I know, could be the bastard's gone soft. Dervish gulped. So you'll help? Hell yes I'll help, Kane laughed, with just a trace of a midwestern accent. Yes and say and I go way back. God, where's that spinning ball of sibapsychosis living these days? Redmond, sir. Well, explains why he never calls. So what you need, son? Dervish explained. We're looking for someone named Joy. An elf. Have you heard of him? Within an instant, Kane's features reverted to the dark expression he had worn when Dervish first confronted him. Why you looking for someone named Joy? Uh, do you know him? Answer the question. Well, we need to question him. We're after one of his friends. Kane took a deep breath. Joy's well known as the cheating est shit on the strip, son. Not one of my casinos ain't being grifted by his thieving ass. So I suppose you could say, yes, I've heard of Joy. Well, we're not his friends. So I gathered. Tell you what, whichever one of us finds him first, we'll give him a turn with the other one. Dervish was pretty sure that he knew what that meant. 
Your turn happens after our turn, it assume. Hit the end of my notes, now it's all by hand. Kane grimaced. Technically, together the consortium constitutes a double A corporation, which means extraterritoriality. Which means you don't get to ask what will do to him. Devish saw Kane going to the dark place again. Thanks for your help, sir, but it really best be going. My friends and I have a meet with Mr. Johnson upstairs. Kane smiled, reverting once more back to his public persona. Have fun. The team organized across from Mr. Johnson, a hawkish sort of man. Mr. Johnson was lean and harsh, checking his watch with an annoyed sort of demeanor at almost eerily regular intervals. The team didn't know what he was waiting for, and didn't want to ask. Geppetto coughed, and Mr. Johnson finally spoke. Greetings, gentlemen. I can see that you're professionals here, which is why I'm not making a point of pleasantries. I need you to rob a banker. Geppetto nodded. Go on. This banker has considerable debts to the consortium, ones that he does not intend to pay for fear that his employers will catch the loss. The consortium wishes his debt returned. Not returned with interest, not returned with violence, merely returned. Mr. Johnson, what, then, is the debt? Two and a half million yen. The team had to hide their surprise. The Johnson continued. The sum is being kept on a platinum cred stick. The banker is currently occupying one of the penthouse suites at the Four Seasons off the Strip. We do not know which one. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, will be to procure this sum of money and return it to myself or any consortium representative. Geppetto nodded. Let's discuss payment. I believe that 20,000 Nguyen will suffice. Geppetto gave the Johnson his best Nagasai how serious JPG face. Add 5,000 to that, Mr. Johnson, and you're giving us a 1% cut of the money we're being paid to steal. I believe it to be a satisfactory sum, especially given that the money is outside of the bank and currently in a vulnerable position. I have also heard it down the grapevine that you require the assistance of Don Frieda with something. I can act as a lesson. Be reasonable, Mr. Johnson. We're going to need at least 50k. I can do 30. 35 with the 5 up front. Deal. With a little bit of rudimentary hacking on 2D's part, the team was able to get a basic floor plan of the four seasons. It was agreed that it was best to try to do the run that night if at all possible, as although no time limit was given for the job, the target would likely be attempting to leave the city in the immediate future, and if he did the job was forfeit. The first obvious pitfall was that the security had their own hardwired network. 2D didn't particularly relish the concept of attempting to sneak into the security room, so he poked around on the employee clearances on the public nodes to see if there was a shortcut. Lo and behold, the two security spiders, one who operated during the day and one who operated during the night, had network backdoors that would allow them to connect to the hardwired system via special hardened uplinks, in the event that they needed to operate the system remotely for instance, if they were out sick. So, the plan started to come together. Dervish would nab the day spider as he left the building, at which point 2D would use his comlink to tell the night spider not to come, that he was going to try to clock an extra hours. From there, Geppetto would turn into fog one of his banshee powers, infiltrate the target's room, and mind control him into dropping the platinum cred stick down the trash chute, for pickup by Dervish. Obviously, although the team didn't know which room the target was in, 2D could spoof his way into the system using the spider's access ID, and find out that way. One problem remained, that of astral security. Spirits were doubtless patrolling upstairs, but 2D wouldn't be able to spot them, so there was a chance that Geppetto, being a dual-natured creature, would pop into the target's room right in time to be nuked by a fire spirit. Still, it was the best plan the team had, and they decided to go with it. Dervish shadowed the day spider as he took the elevator down from the security room to the lobby, stepping into the locker room so he could take off his uniform, which incidentally sported a biomonitor, so the moment he had it off, being knocked unconscious would no longer pop on the security system. The spider strolled, humming, to his car, and the moment he'd unlocked it Dervish put him into a sleeper hold, shoved him into his car, and bound and gagged him. 2D jogged from camera blind spot to camera blind spot to make his way to the car, where he took the spider's comlink and texted the night spider. Dude don't come in today, I need the overtime hours to buy Stacy a Christmas gift. 2D, thumbing through the day spider's contacts, had found his daughter. The night spider replied. You are such an ass, I was already like two blocks out. Whatever, but you owe me one. Okay, I need a steady cash flow, too. 
2D took the opportunity to yoink the profile specs of the Night Spider, if he needed to pretend to be him in the immediate future. Thanks man, you don't know how much this means to me. Coffee's on me for a week. Dervish would nab the Day Spider as he left the building, at which point 2D would use his comlink to tell the Night Spider not to come, that he was going to try to clock an extra hours. From there, Geppetto would turn into Fog one of his Banshee powers, infiltrate the target's room, and mind control him into dropping the platinum cred stick down the trash chute. For pickup by Dervish. Wouldn't the Night Spider already have arrived by the time the Day Spider left, for changeover? Not to mention, a sudden change of hours on the same day when you don't know if that is at all usual, and with short notice. Well, guess I'll see how it played out. Also unsure why the last part couldn't be done without the security system being down, but there you go. With a quick go time to the team, 2D spoofed the profile specs of the Night Spider and backdoored into the security system, posting a message off, caught in traffic, setting car to auto and running things from here until the jam clears up. Don't worry guys, I'm here. He received a few dull acknowledgements from some security guards on the network, and proceeded to begin scoping out the hotel security layout. There were tactically network security guards on each floor, and a single tack team just below the penthouse level to be deployed in the case of emergencies like, say, high profile robberies. Pretty standard. The problem was the on-staff mage, who had a spirit rotation going through the penthouses, just as 2D had feared. He couldn't even peg the spirit's patrol routes, as spirits are invisible to cameras when manifested. I don't like these odds, Geppetto remarked to the team. Having turned into gas in the elevator and then ghosted his way into the penthouse vent system with 2D carefully opening necessary vents and stopping spinning fans for him. 2D agreed. Yet, yeah, I don't like those odds either. Lem see if there's something I can't do to distract the spirit. Wouldn't the night spider already have arrived by the time the day spider left? For changeover? Not to mention, a sudden change of hours on the same day when you don't know if that is at all usual, and with short notice. Should have clarified, we checked the check-in times of the two spiders, and they were fairly sporadic. We guessed that the two of them did this a lot, which is where we got the plan from. They also both lived in the neighborhood, only a short drive away, so times weren't super stringent. There was a window of a few minutes, which is unprofessional, yes, but this was a Four Seasons, not a Megacorp. Also unsure why the last part couldn't be done without the security system being down, but there you go. The ventilation system was a problem, but also 2D wanted to get into the security system to counter the astral security. It was the one thing that could fuck Geppetto completely arbitrarily, since he'd have to manifest himself to see the spirit, giving away his location. 2D relocated himself to the cafe on the first floor of the hotel, to better coordinate with Dervish in the basement and Geppetto at the penthouse level. The cafe was set as the rendezvous point for Dervish and Geppetto upon the completion of their roles in the job. Absently chewing on an overexpensive salad, 2D I dead the target's penthouse the target was sleeping fitfully, then checked the security feeds from the other penthouses. Penthouse 1 1 had a corporate family, Japanese by the look of them. Sleeping. No dice. Penthouse 2 had a single elf reading a book. Again, no dice. Penthouse 3 had two sim sent stars whom 2D recognized as a reality show Guido and a porn star going at it like bonobos. He could work with this. 2D tossed a message to the security mage. Spider hey, Mike, remember how we had that bug last week on the cameras up in the penthouses? Mike not really. That's for you two spiders to work out, not me. Spider well, it's still stuck in thermo, and I'm getting these weird feeds from page 3. It looks like some kind of fight. Can you direct the spirit over there just to be sure? Mike sure, whatever. 2D promptly connected to Geppetto's earphones, with the cry of go, Mathefica, go. Geppetto dropped out of the vent into the banker's room and hammered him with a body puppeting spell. Still asleep, the banker instinctively punched in the combination to the room safe, produced the platinum cred stick, and tossed it down the trash chute before returning to bed. Mike Jeff, you idiot, they were just fucking in there. Like they were last night, and the night before. Spider dude, they really need to fix this bug. Mike you're an idiot. Returning to patrol at P4. 2D sent Geppetto another message. This one to the tune of get out get out get out. Geppetto didn't need much encouraging. And flew back up into the vent. Following the ventilation system down to the cafe men's bathroom. He emerged from the restroom adjusting his tire. As though he'd always been there. And sat at 2D's table. The deed is done. Badass. Just gotta wait on Dervish. Then. 
Dervish jogged up the stairs to the lobby, whistling happily, and rejoined the team. You know, that was almost too easy. 2D. Upon hearing Devish's opinion, instinctively began running for the lobby as five thugs in balaclavas burst through the street entrance of the cafe, side arms drawn. Who took the two and a half mil we were gonna steal? 2D screamed, angrily. Never say it's too easy. 2D was hacking and rigging, although most of his rigging was just done via orders as opposed to jumping in no sim rig. At the start he wasn't particularly impressive. 2 body, 2 strength. 2 agility, 4 intuition later 5, 3 logic later 4, 3 willpower, 3 reaction, 6 resonance with a few submersions under his belt later 8. Most of his relevant hacking skills were 4s, and most of his complex forms were at 6 where he could manage. As for requiring cyber combat for hacking, that's bullshit. Hacking is always a hokinj exploit role. You can either choose to do it as an IP test extended test, but the device rolls to detect your stealth program complex form every round, or to do it as an hour test extended test, but the device rolls to detect once. Commonly referred to as hacking on the fly versus probing a node, cyber combat only ever becomes relevant when if you're detected, and even then only if they sick IC on you instead of booting you from the system. That said, and I'm going to be completely honest here, mundane hackers are statistically better in almost every way to technomancers. The three things technomancers have up on hackers are a their way cheaper monetarily, b they can thread any program they need for weird cases where they need language softs or sniffer programs that a mundane hacker wouldn't bother buying because they're too arcane, and c sprites are the mythificking bomb, because they are based off of spirits and spirits are broken. Also, they can do resonance quests to do crazy stupid bullshit that hackers can't, but you won't really run into that in an average campaign aside from submerging. So, the team was all ready to just book it, until one of the masked men caught sight of 2D and yelled, the hackers run in with the cash. What do we do, Joy? One of the masked men, an elf, yelled back, idiot. Don't use a name here, just get the runner. Joy didn't have much time to give other orders. As he was swiftly distracted by the spatter of the yellow's guts all over the floor as Dervish boosted over the screaming crowd and began going to town on Joy's buddies. Geppetto began flinging spells as the enemy team broke formation to fight while one of them sprinted after 2D. Dervish's next blade blow was blocked by a thin razor just like it. Standing in front of him was a harsh looking elf brandishing a similar cyber blade set up a razor boy. The elf was wearing ancient colors. Joy yelled. Shit. Razor wind. Get him, and beat feet out of the building, with Geppetto struggling to keep up while under fire from the remaining gunman. What sort of matrix work were you focused in? Also curious as to whether you did more rigging work matrix work, and which you focused on more and lessons learned from that. 2D belongs to the Dronomancer stream, which is a technomancer tradition that primarily offers rigging bonuses. Thus, with the rigging angle shored up, I was free to develop him as I wanted in the hacking direction. Since most of the team's plans revolved around a lot of legwork and then a sudden burst of action, 2D was mostly geared towards hacking on the fly, with a high power stealth complex form with mute functionality to compensate for the increased chance of detection. I also gave him a bunch of cyber combat goodies like black hammer, armor, shield and attack because focusing on hacking on the fly put him into the line of fire a lot more than probing nodes. Geppetto was the first to notice that the enemy gunmen were using stick and shock when a tiny micro taser hit his leg and nearly blacked him out, flooring him. Cursing, he stumbled to his feet, but Joy was gone. He yelled. D. We've lost him. Take care of this guy and move out. Dervish yelled back. I'm trying. Holy goddamn. Razor Wind was matching Dervish blow for blow, engaged in a high stakes sword fight between Dervish's Sanga Yasero and some kind of elvish fencing art. Figuring the job came first, Dervish activated his skimmers and boosted for the outside, intent on making it to Caesar's palace and, if he could catch him, tackling Joy. Unfortunately, Joy was long gone, having doubtless gone invisible as he fled. Also unfortunately, Razor Wind lifted off his feet as he activated his own skimmers, and gave chase at 80 miles an hour. Geppetto fought off the gunman he was facing Reedbodder repeated him to stick his obnoxious taser shooting gun in his mouth and pull the trigger, and charged into the lobby to find the remaining gunman searching the pockets of a thoroughly worked over 2D, glancing anxiously towards the security elevator. He announced into a mic. Hacker don't got it, Joy. Must be the Sammy. Geppetto would have gotten the guy right then, but with a balum, a security guard vaulted the front desk and did Geppetto's job for him. 
I find this song to be appropriate whenever Dervish does something recoculous, and in this case I put it on while we were playing. So, you know what's badders? Parker. You know what's more badders? Parker chase scenes. Still need some badders. Let's try a Parker chase scene across the Vega Strip. Nah, not badders enough. A Parker chase scene where the two participants are sword fighting when they catch up to each other. Better, but it still needs a bit more. I'm thinking Wolverine knife hand fighting. Better. Now we just add that both participants have goddamn rockets for feet, and we have a real man's chase scene going. Pedestrians shouted and pointed out at the Bellagio fountain as the two dueling figures sped across it right in the middle of the nightly light show. Dodging bursts of water while periodically pinging off of each other like Beyblades. If Beyblades were made of approximately 50% more meat, 100% more murder, and 200% more awesome. Dervish vaulted the divider and launched into the middle of the street, dodging cars in wide banking turns and ducking in between vehicles as Razor Wind charged headlong towards him, knocking off side mirrors and chunks of fender with his blades. Geppetto quickly covered things with the security guy we were just eating in the cafe. We're on the security footage and everything. The spider can confirm that and, after a quick healing spell for 2D and an all's clear message from 2D's spidery alter ego, Geppetto and 2D return to the car I forgot to mention. They had stolen a car because they couldn't take the rigor van from Seattle down to Vegas and made for the strip. As Dervish neared Caesar's palace capture Technovid palace, Razor Wind picked up speed, desperate to get his two and a half mil before he lost it to the consortium. Dervish literally backflipped up the casino steps, dodging blade swing after swing until, with the ballum, it was all over. Razor Wind stopped chasing. The warning shot, placed by a troll sniper at the doorway, had made its message clear. He'd lost. Pushing his feet forward, he boosted back into the streets and was gone. 2D and Geppetto arrived at Caesar's palace in time to witness Dervish handing the platinum stick over to Kane. Good job, kid. You know, we think we may have pegged Joy. Dervish groaned. You don't say. No, I mean, we got intel on what his next job's gonna be. Intercepted a courier. Dervish brightened up. Oh. So you're gonna help us nail him? Well, really, you're going to help us nail him. You up for another Johnson meet? The team got paid, and reconvened with both Kane and Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson continued to check his watch, although now he seemed to be doing it more frequently. Good evening, runners. How'd you like to play at wearing white hats, for once? Geppetto grinned. If it means we get joy, I'll wear any hat you want, Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson cut right to business. Mr. Joy is set to rob the Bellagio vault tomorrow night. Horizon is hosting a party, so most of our security assets will be focused on the ballroom. There's also been a recent shift change between casinos, part of consortium policy, you see. So we have a lot of rookies on staff. You're runners, you're competent, and you know how runners think, so we want you as our extra security detail. Geppetto continued to smile. Asking price? 40,000, a shot at joy, and a personal audience with Don Frieda. Geppetto frowned. 40,000 can't be split three ways, I know. Which is why there will be four of you. A lithe elf with Anglo-Saxon features entered the room in grey fatigues and a barry, quietly sitting between the team and Mr. Johnson. This Sean Falstaff, codename Bend, former T ghost went mercenary a few years ago. We figure that if anyone knows how to infiltrate a setup like ours, it's him. So we bought him out as a consultant. The team gawked, but Geppetto immediately picked up the dialogue. You know our fixer, Danny. He vouches for this guy? Kane grinned. 100%. Ben turned to Geppetto, saluted, and announced. Good friends. Actually, sir, in a purely civilian capacity. Dervish chuckled. I like this guy. With a sniffle, 2D began to weep quietly. As everyone looked at him awkwardly, 2D burbled. I just, I'm having flashbacks to our last ninja, and you look, you look so close to the real deal. I, I'm sorry, I need to ask you some questions. 2D straightened up, locking eyes with Bend. Do you have any outstanding warrants for multiple child homicide? The former ghost blinked. What? Answer the damn question. Number. That's stupid. 2D looked at him judgingly. Are you under monitor by a cop corp? Number. Would you identify yourself as a ninja badass? If you want to look at this that way, sir. But I prefer infiltration specialist. I don't do wet work if I can help it, and the ninja implies assassination. Have you ever sold your team out because a sprawl gang scared you? 
Ben's eyes narrowed. That one is actually insulting. With a sob, 2D grinned and grabbed Geppetto and Dervish by the shoulders, using them for support as he wept openly. We found him. Guys. We found an infiltrator that doesn't suck. The team was given the rest of the night to scope out the security systems of the Bellagio Vault. 2D continued to ask Ben incredulous questions. So you've never been arrested? No, but I was special ops before I went Merc, so I always enjoyed certain liberties. So no outstanding warrants. Why do you keep asking me that? So I can never be hurt again. Ben gave 2D a look like in pick related. Look, I'm going to go check out this back elevator. The blueprints only had one elevator, the one I came up on, so I'm betting this leads to somewhere secret. We should scope it out to make sure that Joy's team hasn't set anything up. 2D began sniffling again. Oh my god, you have good, tactically sound ideas and everything. Bend briskly power walked towards the elevator in question, the better to avoid the damage Channa. All things considered, the vault level was fairly unremarkable. A U-shaped hallway with an elevator at either end one that led up to a reinforced door on the main level, one that was a secret end, in between, a security room with food vending machines, a spider nexus, a room full of drones keyed to the spider nexus, the vault itself, and a bathroom. Geppetto set up on the casino floor, the better to ascend the partygoers in the ballroom to see if he could spot Joy early. Bend found a security elevator, keyed to only the ground and vault floors. Experimentally, he followed it up, and found himself in a long, reinforced hallway. Following the hallway, he hit a dead end, but there seemed to be hinges on it. With that, Bend exited into the first floor men's bathroom off the casino, through a secret door behind one of the sinks. He called into the team. Secret entrance in the casino bathroom. Hidden but way less reinforced than the main entrance. If they know about this they'll have a way easier time of it, considering the elevator's mechanical so 2D's got no control over it. 2D bled over the comms. Dude you think of everything. Dervish sighed. Shut up, 2D. Yeah, that's a good thought. Bend. Get your tax suit and gecko grips. I'm thinking we cloak you and then stick you on the ceiling of the bathroom. Bend responded curtly. Acknowledged. We'll need someone watching this exit. Dervish set up in the Nexus room to protect 2D, and the team prepared for the run. That's the downside to being white hat you know something's going down, but never when. All was quiet for most of the day. Geppetto summoned a fire spirit and a man spirit to act as astral security below decks, then broadly observed media personalities milling about and making contacts. He received a sideways glance from Darius and George, one of the personalities at the event. This all changed when all the lights went out. Below ground, in the vault level, everything reverted to the familiar crimson of emergency power. 2D gestured to the Bellagio security spider. Shit. Jack into the nexus, make sure everything's fine. The rookie spider plugged in, and immediately began foaming at the mouth. His bio monitor started flatlining. 2D fuck. Dervish get out there and see what's going on. 2D called up a false sprite, dove the nexus and found himself next to the derezzed icon of the security spider. Across from an icon of a red-hatted Italian plumber tooling with the virtual pipes of the security system. Activating his black hammer complex form, he announced, bomb-headed icon grinning manically. Oh, it is on. Geppetto spurred his spirits to search for hostiles and attack, and got no response. He tried to contact them again, and once more got no response. Which was weird, because mages have an intuitive connection to their bound spirits and know when they get poofed, and both spirits were manifested and very much alive. He jogged over to the main vault elevator, to find the blast doors open, and the elevator already at the vault level. The clack 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 of silenced gunfire sounded from below. With a melodramatic sigh, Geppetto hovered down the shaft. Down below, Dervish exited into the hallway to find a troll in a security uniform emerging from the vault with a backpack full of something, while a human in combat armor dual wielding silenced SMGS covered his back. Perforated security guards littered the hallway, no match for the gun adept. Dervish figured that he'd be a bit more his speed, and activated his boosters. In net space, 2D tossed digital bombs at Mario Hacker, while setting the node's IC to lock the bastard in the system, wherever he'd come from. This fucker was his. That is, until he saw the entire environment derizzing around him as a third. Cloaked icon began crashing the node. Recognizing the stink of two times bastard 2D quickly jacked out before the node crashed, with Mario Hacker and his false sprite locked in it. Mario Hacker was a good thing, 
because the fucker had some serious dump shock in his future, and couldn't jack out because of the modded blackouts that the IC were hammering him with. The fault sprite was a bigger problem, since 2D's fault sprites were never on quite good terms with him, and one of them had just had its connection severed from him, freeing it into the resonance. This would require later attention namely finding and killing the little bastard in the resonance before it could go full free sprite and put a name to its hated former master. But right now Mario Hacker was the greatest issue. 2D exited the now ruined Nexus room and, in a hunch, checked the bathroom. There he was. A fat neck bearded bastard who looked like he spent too much on V was lying face down on the bathroom floor. With his data jack adapter still plugged into some exposed wiring that he drilled out of the wall between the bathroom and Nexus. The dude was out cold, having suffered the full effects of a dump shock. Next to him was a tasteful potted plant with gold flecks in it, for some reason. 2D put his poser combat boots to their roughly intended use and began to stomp on Netbird's head until he started hearing snaps. Who's jumping on whose head now you goomba bitch? Breathless, Geppetto stumbled into the room, and sternly lectured the air. Oh, you have got to be killing me, you too. 2D looked at Geppetto quizzically as the fire and man spirit manifested, both completely stoned off their asses and giggling to each other. Dude, the man-shaped column of infernal fire announced. Dude, agreed the slender mockery of all that is man. Who's jumping on whose head, rather. Dude, why are your spirits completely fucking bombed? Geppetto took one look at the tasteful potted plant, cursed loudly, and began stomping on it with his fancy loafers. God damn it 2D, you're wearing boots, help me out here. Confused, 2D proceeded to stomp his blood-stained boots on the plant, strewing pottery and plant matter everywhere. I'm not getting any closer to understanding this. Geppetto grunted, continuing to kick at the plant. Haven Lily, causes a positive background count. English, please. The bastards got my spirit stoned. The fire spirit choked out a few belly laughs and announced. Bro, I'm not stoned. 2D stared at it sideways. You look pretty stoned to me. The man spirit put on its serious face and said. No, honestly, he's not stoned. 2D and Geppetto both looked at the man spirit expectantly. After about 5 seconds it broke into a squealing laugh. F cause he's a fire spirit so he's baked. The man spirit and fire spirit high fived and promptly collapsed into hysterics. Geppetto fassa palmed with a warp noise. Great. They're completely fucking useless like this. Meanwhile, in the hallway, Dervish was picking bullets out of his author skin while scraping the gun adept guts off of his cyber blades. As the troll retreated into the secret elevator, Joy materialized long enough to hit the up button. Unfortunately, the system was purely mechanical, so Dervish wasn't able to make it before the gates closed and the elevator began ascending. In the bathroom, Ben looked down as a human wearing an earpiece and a few active foci entered and then scooted into one of the stalls. He murmured. Look, boss, I can only hold the mind control on the troll for so long. Sooner or later he's gonna remember he was a security guard. I'm maintaining it as long as I can, but you need to get out of there. I'm pretty sure we already lost click clack in the plumber. Grinning like a loon, Ben proceeded to follow Geek the Mage Protocol, flipped upside down into the bathroom stall, and proceeded to garrot the guy, Hitman style. The mage went limp, and all his maintained spells dropped. In the secret hallway, there was a call of alright, guard, led me back to the security entrance, followed by the sound of a roaring, enraged troll, and a cry of oh god my legs. Dervish, Geppetto, and 2D ascended the secret elevator to find Ben and a very, very pissed off troll security guard putting cuffs on a screaming Joy. One of Joy's legs was snapped off below the knee, spurting blood, and he was screaming deliriously as paramedics stormed into the room through the secret entrance. Jesus Christ, mutter 2D, it's beautiful. The troll picked up the backpack and handed it to Geppetto, who gasped at the feel of an extremely high force magical item within. The troll announced, in an irate Joycey accent, gets this back to the vault. Hester B's gonna want her focus under's lock and key. He then glared back at a swiftly paling joy, malicious glee in his eyes. Gots yows, ya punk. Geppetto, as he walked the backpack back down to the vault, called up Mr. Johnson. Johnson, it's over. Returning to security rounds. We expect our cred at the end of the night. Geppetto out. The next day, the team was escorted to Joy's fortified hospital cell. His leg had been reattached, although the look on his face suggested that it didn't much matter if his likely fate was any indication. Geppetto said two words. Two times. Joy grimaced. 
I'll tell you everything if you can promise me one thing. I'm listening. Tell them to make it quick. Geppetto looked back at Mr. Johnson, standing in the hallway, who nodded slowly. That can be arranged. Joy exhaled loudly. We have two more teammates, Mirage and Stimpak. Mirage is a bio Sammy, and Stimpak's a healing mage. Each of us has the codes to a satellite uplink that two times operates through, so that if we ever really needed to find him we could cross-reference our access points. He tossed a small teddy bear with a data port to 2D. Here. 2D connected to the teddy bear, and found himself diving a satellite over Southeast Asia. The theme from 2001 A Space Odyssey played in his head, as the sun rose in his sensors, warming his solar cores. Terabytes of broadcast data raced through his mind. In the real world, 2D came violently in his shorts and then passed out. Joy winced dully. You. Geppetto didn't miss a beat. Where are Mirage and Stimpak? Joy frowned. Haven't seen hide nor hair of Stimpak. Might have gotten geeked. Saw Mirage, though. She got out of the game. Married into Shiawas. Geppetto had a bad feeling about this. Shiawas North America. Joy laughed cruelly. Try Shiawas proper. Geppetto rubbed his temples. Exasperated. Brilliant. We're going to Japan. From the floor. 2D wheezed. My awesome. Dervish looked at Geppetto. We've still got that talk with Don Frieda, if you want, Geppetto. Geppetto sighed. I guess. It'll be a formality, though. I'm not sure how many people he knows in Neo Tokyo. We've got something to cover first, though. He turned to Bend. Bend, how'd you like to sign into our contract full time? Bend raised an eyebrow, nonplussed. Sounds like you're into dangerous work. How's hunting down a rogue hacker for a hundred thousand sound? Bend smiled. I did always want to see the cherry blossoms. In the real real world, the players and GM congratulated our new player on passing the test. He was officially our replacements for Trout's player. The meeting with Don Frieda was a mildly awkward one. Because not only was Geppetto a representative of a different mob family, the Finnegan's kind of an irony, considering he was Italian, not Irish. But also the hacker was wearing just stained pants. These difficulties aside, Don Frieda offered what little help he could. He knew a man by the name of Taka in Neo Tokyo. Taka was a man of the vilest sort, capable of committing any crime if there was a profit in it. However, he was also an Oni, a brightly colored med variant of Orcs endemic to the region, and for that the accuser and the core had not picked him up. He remained a valuable contact of gauging criminals in Japan, and Frieda had no doubts that he would prove useful if appropriately greased. We were not to trust Taka under any circumstances, however, the Don assured us that if anything happened to one of Donia Romilly's faithful servants, he would be most displeased. With little else to offer, the Don greased our palms a bit more for our troubles 2D promptly used this money to buy more drones, two little manhack like unfolding buzz saws for personal defense, while Dervish upgraded his combat armor, and arranged for a flight to Neo Tokyo, and that's where I'll call it for tonight. As usual, I'll stick around for questions and the like, at least for a little while. How did you find such an awesome group and DM for this? I too want to know this. Seriously, you have to give up your soul and a kidney to have awesome like this happening? The GM is a great guy, and has been my roommate for 2 years although he's moving out this summer. He's got a bad habit of being a little hardcore about his game sometimes, but in the case of Shadoran, it works vastly in his favor. The system was basically made for him. Geppetto is my other roommate, and is a really chill Christian dude. Geppetto was basically an exploration for him. He wanted to create a character that he himself would actively find reprehensible, as a thought experiment, and succeeded greatly. When he was playing Geppetto he had kind of this on off switch thing going. When he got into character, he really got into character. Dervish and Bend are both players that we cherry picked from other games that we'd had with them, and found them fun in. Dervish, we'd played with more than Bend. So Bend was a little of an experiment, but by god was it an experiment that worked out. Bend runs with the team to this day, even though Geppetto and 2D are no longer with him and Dervish. So, basically, luck, but also cherry picking of players we knew. Remember, this game wasn't always all good characters. You know, I really need to make a video about the different parts of the Shadowgun universe, or at least different parts of the planet, you know? Uh, like, what I love is the way you can go anywhere on like you know this dystopian fantasy near future universe of earth i don't know i i just love alternate universe type shit you know what i mean um i don't know i just love the world building aspects that shit just makes me hard you know what i mean it really does 
and hey, thank God they got a new player so fast, like, you know, especially, like, you know, let's face it, I, I did feel bad whenever he had to leave, but, you know, ah, what can you do? Like, you know, he wasn't really a best, the best player, so it's good that they got a replacement, and hopefully, like, you know, he's nowhere near as bad. But no, I would love to play Shadowrun, but sadly, you know, the only people near me playing to only, like, be into 40k and he just Sigmar, as far as I know, anyway, like, you know, I'd love, I, I don't know, it's something, like, you know, I really enjoy the universe, and I love the whole aesthetic of it, you know, there's something really appealing about it, like, you know, I really can't wait to see what they do in Japan, I, I, I'm really looking forward to it, so we'll just see how that goes, but, uh, no, I really enjoyed it. Darvish V user wing. I thought it was great. Like you know, the idea of them like, you know, flying down the strip in Las Vegas and all that and oh, I don't know. There was it was something very cinematic about it. Like, you know, something I could imagine seeing in like a really big high end movie, you know what I mean? I don't know, I, I I love that shit, you know what I mean? But uh no, er um let us know what your favourite bit was down below. For me, I thought it was great, to be honest with you. Um but here, if you enjoyed the music, um you should check out my other channel, uh on twenty four seven um, Synthwave Radio Show, I think it's pretty cool, um, I, I think it's great background music, especially for Shadowrun, it really does give you the, you know, them vibes, you know what I mean, um, I love it, so, um, if you enjoyed the music, definitely go ahead and check it out, like, you know, I think it's great, just background music, you know what I mean, I, I, I sit and listen to it, like, you know, just whenever I'm doing whatever, like, you know, sitting and editing, editing these videos and all, I, I love it. But, uh, no, as always, make sure to subscribe, to stay up to speed, like the video if you enjoyed it, like, and I'll see you soon. If you haven't already, check out my Redbubble portfolio. You might just find something you like. This, this is, is not okay. This needs to stop now. This is cancer. This, this is so much cancer that I can feel the tumors growing on my back. And it's way down heavy on me, and it's not okay. Can you help a nigga out and just stop this? Please?